Fantastic! From the depth instant tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a hovercraft so that you can build hovercrafts and hover tanks and cool stuff like that. And it will even have some kind of projectile avoidance so that you can get hit less often. Let's go! To begin with, we are making a basic shape for our hovercraft. So I made a little steel frame here <clears throat> and I put a little stone box in the middle to have some AI on. And do remember that if you do build your craft lighter, it will be able to go fast much more easily. I'm building some kind of heavy medium uh, hover tank, but if you want to build a fast hover tank that's much faster than this will be, you should probably build it in alloy. Right, so now we can go to the air tab and we can select the huge jet engines or the small jet engines, whatever size you build. And uh, you want to have the steering and controlling thrusters in the front and the very back. This is to be able to get the most out of them by having a, well, you know, a good pivoting point from the mass center. Just like that. Then we're also going to place four thrusters in each corner of the hover tank, just like this. Then of course we need to have some propulsion. So we are going to add forwards propulsion. Now it can be a good idea to wait with adding these propulsion systems when you actually have built your hover tank almost completely done. Because it's a good way to place them alongside the axis of center. When you do not have one of these controls at close by the mass of center, you will cause the other thrusters to try and compensate by having a counter movement to basically counter your moves. So it's not so efficient if you have them off axis center. It will work, just telling you. Alright, so I've added some engines and an basic AI here. And if you want to know more about engines, please check my Insta tutorial about that. The more efficient engines have higher priority and this low efficient engine that's powerful have lower priority. Makes basic sense, but once again, other tutorial. Let's go into this uh, AI. And inside here we need to select some kind of battle behavior. For hover tank, point at makes the most sense, because the hover tank necessarily does not need a turret and can actually point the entire vehicle towards the enemy and use an omni bandlet if you use APS. Right, so we click it to activate the point at. Uh, drag down pitch to zero, we will not use pitch on this hover tank at all. Uh, to make this troubleshooter understand what we're doing, we can check this reverse fly, turn on spot, be stationary, strafe, control altitude. This is to make sure that you don't set up anything weird. Right, so what combat altitudes should we have? I think the combat altitude of this vehicle should be 60 and the combat distance should probably be 800, just like that. Then we can go to the next page, the max altitude. We don't want it to go higher than 100 meters. Minimum altitude 50-50 should be all right indeed. Avoid all vehicles and let this be in air. Then we can go to maneuver and select add maneuver. Here we will select hover movement. Make sure this is active. Now we can hear the engines spinning up here. And here we have some different settings. Make sure that the max pitch and roll is zero and zero to make the most stable hover tank you can. All of this should be fine. We can go to additional and add an additional routine. We're going to add water start in case we drop into water. And then we're also going to add another AI routine card. And this is because we actually want to have a projectile avoidance. We'll set up this a little bit later. We're gonna plop down a intervehicle transmitter just like that. Now you will go into the AI vehicle tab and select uh, Joe and you can see make sure it's a set to PID. Check that all of them are set to PID. With an update, the PID's block for the AI got removed and it's now inherently set up into the AI automatically. So make sure everything is set up to PID and we might fine tune this later. 
Basically, if you look at roll, for example, if you turn this up, it will be much more aggressive in its reaction to counter roll. This might make you wobble, so only set it to something stronger if you have trouble to keep your vehicle straight. If you do have trouble keeping your vehicle straight and might turn it up, you actually might need to have better or stronger or more thrusters. Right, so how do we set up the rest of these things? Well, we have a couple of thrusters here and we need to set them up correctly to be able to stabilize and move around. So we'll begin with the corner one here. Uh, it's set to automatic control, but we don't know if it's right, so uh, it is actually right, jaw right and strafe left, but a lot of the times they're not, so set them to manual. And now we can see we have a Turner preset. Well, that's fantastic. Check this box, strafe and hover, then we can have strafe as well. So when this goes forward, when this pushes, it will strafe left, and this is absolutely correct, as you can see here. So it got a little green light there and a little green light there. This is a turner and a strafer. We need to set up this thing as well. Go to manual, strafe and hover, strafe right, fantastic. The other turning thrusters should be set up the same way, uh, but of course proportionally, just like that. Right, so now our strafers slash turner thrusters are set up correctly, very nice. Extra tutorial. I just realized I'm building this the wrong direction, 180 degrees uh, wrong. So let's save this vehicle as a thing, like that. Now we can destroy all vehicles. Now we can load vehicle, take the thing and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, yes. Rotate it again 90 degrees clockwise, yes. And now we can load this thing. And now you can see it is magically turned in the right direction. Isn't this quite fantastic? This is how to do when you realize you build it wrongly. So uh, let's get back to the thrusters here. Make sure this is a pusher preset and spread to neighbors. And all the ones in the back here will be set up correctly. Of course, uh, with this little mistake I made, we probably need to uh, set up the thrusters again. Because if you turn it around like I do, you need to make sure that, you know, the ones we already set up are actually set up correctly. Like that, now we can continue. By the way, we have EMP insulated this little thing by adding a few EMP blocks at the edges of the vehicle to absorb EMP stuff. And of course, the AI should be in a stone box. Right, so now we can set up these other things that are below here. And this needs to be set to manual control. It's a pitcher preset and a roller preset and a pusher preset. So how do we set up all of these things? Well, pitch, roll, and hover and they are green like this and it should indeed work now you can of course uh, or you should actually like double check this um, like imagine that this goes uh, full forwards what will it do to the vehicle it will pitch down so this is correct it will roll roll left okay if this goes forward uh, it will roll left this is correct so yes and hover upwards yep it's set to upwards so that makes sense so just do like that, fantastic. And the last one here, and we set up. And it should be a good idea to actually check that these are set up correctly, otherwise you will have a lot of problem. And all the thrusters are indeed set up correctly, fantastic. All right, cool. So now we have set up the hover movement and we can actually command it a little bit. So we'll go into this little menu here, we go to this, set to patrol mode, and just make it move there. And here you can see, it automatically moves here and turns around and strafes and do whatever it needs to do to do that. So that's pretty cool. It works pretty well. So add a good couple of balloons like this, and if you go here and just turn this thing off, it will drop down. And you can see it will release the balloons and get us out of the air. And as you probably clearly can see there, uh, we should actually make these start kind of 
uh, already from 20 until probably 30, something like that, is much better. Okay, cool. So if we drop line like that, okay, we don't touch the water, that's amazing. Let's turn it back on and it should get up into the air and uh, the balloons should not get activated unless we have some kind of problem. Beautiful. Right, so the next setting we need to set up is projectile avoidance. So go in here and make sure that projectile avoidance is active. Now there is a lot of things you can do here, but basically we don't need to do much. You can leave this one slash distance thing uh, online and you'll just scroll down here and I'll set it to what it was before. So here we have this value and it says this equation evaluated output will be used for anything. So uh, make this uh, strafe right or left. Beautiful. And you can basically leave it like this. You can add additional things it can do as well. Well just like this. Now we have a basic projectile avoidance going on here and make sure that they are set to active. It can be a little bit hard to see when stuff is on or off, so just check that before you uh, save and conclude your beautiful build. And to well utilize the projectile avoidance, it's of course good good idea to have some munition warners onto your craft. Now I'm going to add some detection, ammunition, and weaponry. Do remember when you add heavy things like this turret, the mass of center will be offset. Try to counterbalance this by adding more stuff basically, so that you won't have some kind of problem. Now what I thought is to put my kind of heavy turret there in the back in order for me to put some heavy armor in the front here. Right there, adding some heavy armor protection shield here in the front will help us move the balance back to kind of a center position. So that's really beautiful. And you know that your craft is quite stable if it's hard to see if it's frozen or unfrozen. How to make good AI detection, how to make rail guns or uh, burst guns like this or engines or detection and everything like this is of course explained in my other instant tutorial. So I will have to refer you to those for uh, more instructions. Now I'm going to armor and finish this thing up a little bit and of course enclose the AI compartment and stuff like that. Um, a little bit offline because I already explained how to armor things up in my armor tutorial so please check that out. Just to make sure that everything works fine we of course need to test it a little bit so we're just spawning a marauder here. We're making it automatically control itself there so we can see what it does. And there you can see it tried to avoid that cram shell by moving quickly sideways. Very nice. And there you have it. This is how to make a hovercraft. Thanks to Halofo, our member at YouTube, for requesting this tutorial. This is your host Jim Desm, signing out.